We stand on the precipice of a new industrial revolution, the fifth industrial revolution, one that integrates human and advanced technologies to create more sustainable human-centric solutions. It builds on the digital advancements of the fourth industrial revolution, the integration of the internet into our personal and professional lives. And we all survived and many thrive. Now, once again, we're staring down the barrel of change, this time fueled by the unknown of AI. I believe once again we will survive and thrive. That's why I've invited two of the most forward-thinking professionals to join me for a conversation about what the future of accounting and the accounts payable department will look like in, say, five years, and more importantly, what you need to do to prepare. I want to start out by taking a few minutes to discuss what these departments will look like, and then, of course, we're going to go on to what you need to do to prepare. I'd like to start off by addressing the elephant in the accounts payable room, and don't you laugh, Jamie, paper check. So I believe from my conversations with various people and from what I see uh, myself when I'm out and about in the business world, that in the United States, we are finally getting close to, uh, I don't want to say completely eliminating paper checks, but the conversation today about paper checks is not, of course, we'll pay with a paper check, but people very readily look for other options. And so I think we will drastically reduce the number of paper checks for, for a number of reasons, although I think we will not get uh, away from them completely. But I could see us in the business world getting to the point where only 10 to maybe 20% of all payments were made with paper check. So now I want to ask, I want to see what if, if Lynn agrees with me, and then ask her really to focus on what she thinks, where we're going with P cards, uh, company uh, credit cards, and instant payments. Well, thanks, Mary. It's a great way to start. Um, I would love to see that great reduction in checks like you're you're saying. And I'd love to hear from Jamie, you know, how did uh, the rest of the world manage to do that so fast where the United States, you know, still struggles a little bit. But um, no, I, I think as we look forward, I mean, certainly cards, uh, commercial cards of all types, including P cards, purchasing cards, uh, you know, they, they'll have a place for sure. Um, I think, though, we're going to see more virtual versions of cards. And I mean, both uh, virtual options issued directly to individuals that they can be using in conjunction with mobile wallets, especially travelers on the go, that can be very convenient. Um, but then also the virtual card variety that, uh, you know, that, that's used by accounts payable AP today just for the invoice payment. So I think both of these will continue to grow, right? If we're going to shove checks out the door, we, we need to keep adding on, you know, some other things that they're using instead. Uh, but, you know, and, and I think uh, with instant payments, you know, that obviously, if you're reading any sort of uh, industry headlines, you know that it continues to grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen lots of different applications, you know, more so in the B2C, like business to consumer, um, not as much yet in the mm -hmm. B2B business to business, but certainly there are applications like, um, you know, payroll, you know, getting wages into employees' hands quickly, mm -hmm. uh, emergency situations, whether that be payroll or emergency purchases, uh, you know, there's all sorts of, of ways instant payments are entering the scene, but mm -hmm. there's room for everything. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear Jamie's thoughts too on that. All righty. So uh, Mr. Bradford, uh, Mr. Radford, I know I'm calling you Bradford. We're going to put you in the spotlight and see what you think now and um, as well as what uh, you see for invoices, because let's face it, that's where uh, a lot of us are focused. Yeah. Look, uh, and again, Lena, if I had to, an answer of why the UK and the rest of Europe uh, are probably a little further forward in terms of che manual checks into automated and backs payments, I'd love to tell you. But I think it was just a focus from our banking systems, if I'm brutally honest. I think the focus was very much around um, our banking solutions wanted to drive this. But actually, what does it mean for accounts payable? We still absolutely have to see lots of manual processes going on. So the focus of today is obviously AI and what it means for our future. So, you know, I've got six things, Mary that I think from an invoice handling point of view that AI and new tech will help or assist us. And this is stuff, and I use this terminology, um, it's not a time to have the ostrich effect and pop your head in the sand and hopefully pop your head up and everything's sorted. This is stuff we need to embrace. So I definitely think for the next five years or so, full automation with AI support will help and assist, but not fully 
uh, take over people's jobs, which is always a, a challenge that I hear a lot about. Blockchain and different currencies, that's clearly on the horizon. People are ultimately putting lots of time and effort into that. In the UK, and again, I guess around the world, we, we're doing a lot around real-time payment, um, the adoption of digital plat platforms and payment currencies. Vendor portals, Mary, I know yeah. we've spoken many times about that. That's always a big topic. E-invoicing, you know, around uh, in the UK and Europe, we have this th thing called the PEPL uh, standard, which is all about compliance around e-invoicing. That's a big area, and I know that's going to develop over five years. And the last part, uh, option sort of six, if you like, is the data analytic part. As we become more AI-driven and more systems orientated, people will become more analytical and the data will become very critical. And I know from your perspective, Lynn, the more that we can do away with the 80-20 Pareto by using P cards and the great uh, sort of assets they have, actually we're going to rely on people more to be more data analytical. Okay, that's uh, that's great. And I guess uh, it might be appropriate to comment, Jamie, that the United States and uh, the UK are, uh, are probably two, uh, I don't want to say the only countries because I know there are others that have not gone towards mandatory electronic invoicing. Yeah, I think you're right. I think definitely, again, look, I think it's, we can talk about countries, regions that are adopting or not adopting these sort of things, but it actually is driven a little bit by businesses and organizations as well. It's about wanting to try and make these changes. And again, Lynn, you've been in our, our world for a long time now. You spoke to um, Mary's audiences, you've spoken to our audiences. Actually, I think the people are making that difference. They're wanting to have look at new tech, new different ways of doing things. So it's, it's driven a little bit by region and country, but actually, very much around organization and people as well. Okay, so now let's focus in on jobs because I know that's what everybody is concerned about. And typically new technology eliminates some jobs but creates more jobs. Um, do you think that will happen with the introduction of AI? And I'm gonna, I'll am going i throw the, the, you know, the gauntlet down and say that I think exactly what happened like with the introduction of personal computers and Excel and you know all the things we've seen over the, our, our lifetime, um, that I think that it will eliminate some jobs, some tasks, but at the end of the day, there'll be more jobs. And when I'm talking about more jobs, I don't mean uh, programming type jobs, but just uh, people who can figure out how to use this new technology and, uh, and apply it. Do you agree, Lynn? Yeah, and I think, you know, with accounts payable in particular, you know, people I think have been so used to being in a silo pretty much within the organization, you know, again, kind of behind the scenes and whatnot. Well, I, I think with all the technology technology solutions, AP is getting pushed, you know, further and further forward. And, you know, now they're in the spotlight a little bit. And that's been coming on for quite some time. But I think AP folks need to be able to take a broad look at the organization. Uh, there needs to be a greater awareness of how does what I do impact others? What are the interrelationships between accounts payable and other uh, businesses? Because with all the technology, it can be great. But if the different technology systems are not talking to each other, you're still left with a very fragmented process. So I, I think it takes people in AP to kind of broadly look, you know, across the organization to see where does all this fit together and how is what I'm doing going to impact others. So Jamie, do you agree? Yeah, I totally agree, Lynn. And I think the, the, you know, what I would add to that ultimately is that if you look at AI and the, the, the sort of the growth of AI very recently, it's it's a machine learning. So the learning is quite an important factor. So it's learning from us. And it actually is learning from something that we did 12, 18 months ago. So actually, we've got to continue with what we're doing as humans to input to make machine learning and AI better. But what we shouldn't do is be afraid of this. If it takes roles, it's not taking roles because we're going to make the roles redundant. What we're actually doing is improving the processes, the people, the businesses we work in. You've got to embrace it. You've got to understand it. Very importantly, though, you've got to learn from it and you've got to try and grow with it. That's the crucial part. So yes, on the face of it, yes, it looks like if you listen to the media, it's taking millions of jobs. The reality is I don't believe that's the case. I think it's changing the jobs uh, that, that people do. And in the world of accounts payable, it should be making our jobs a lot more exciting and actually more value add as well. Exactly, exactly. You know, Mary, if I may just address one thing, you know, sure. Jamie, when, when you made the comment about don't be the ostrich and, and put your head down, you know, on that note, 
I think some organizations say, oh, we're too small. You know, AI is not going to impact us. But in reality, it's those smaller organizations that maybe even has the most to gain from technology because they're spread so thin today with the lack of, of big staffs that they need to, you know, have that awareness, as you're saying, and, and just, you know, take advantage. I think that's a good point. Very, very good point. All right. So given the capabilities of AI applications like Microsoft Copilot, chat GPT, which by the way, just came out with an updated version. How important do you think it will be to write macros for Excel, which, you know, I know is a, a skill, a skill I'm, I'm not very good at. And I am going to, again, I'll stick my head in the gauntlet and say, I think that skill will become less important because AI will be able to either write the macro or do the routine itself. And Jamie, I'm going to put you in the spotlight to start off with. What do you think? Mary, I, yeah. I remember the days before Excel. So I remember the days of Lotus and, you know, and very manual <laughs> processes. So, you know, yes, I'm old enough that I'm that old. But but I think the thing is, you know, if you look at general finance, finance organizations are really trying to move away from Excel wherever they possibly can anyway, because they see this as a third solution rather than their ERPs and the standard processes. So I totally agree with you, Mary. I think AI will take over those those more complex macros that people struggle to find and, and keep. And, and again, I don't know whether it's the same in the US, but when macros are written, usually in finance organization, if a person leaves, they leave with the knowledge oh, of how yeah. the macro is written. So then somebody's got to come in and try and understand the macros, etc. So I think there's a place for uh, AI and, and automation and, and solutions to come and assist that process very much so. So Lynn, do you agree? Well, yes. And, and to build on that too, I mean, I think AI, especially within the AP realm, it can be helping with things like, you know, the invoice processing and, um, you know, just all the different rules uh, that right now, you know, you're relying largely on, on human efforts. Uh, but I do have to share a little um, story, if you will, in talking with another organization just about programs like the Microsoft Copilot. Mm -hmm. uh, that company found that when implementing Copilot, it can be uh, more robust than maybe you anticipated. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is, if Copilot is searching your internal systems, and an employee, you know, decides, oh, I'm going to, you know, search or do a question on give me um, employees personal data or vendors personal data, maybe even vendors banking information. It's possible that Copilot could reach its its fingers into those buckets and have unintended consequences. So I think as AI gets put into place, uh, organizations need to really be careful and know where is it, you know, reaching out to search and what kind of results is it going to give people who normally wouldn't have access to certain data. So that, that's my two cents. Great, great <laughs> tool, but um, also know what it can do. And it's probably something many organizations have not considered. Right. And I think it's important to point out at this, at this point that still the AI tools all make mistakes. So you can't uh, rely on it 100%. Um, and also we, we, we're talking about Microsoft Copilot. And I think when we say that, we just mean the general Microsoft Copilot, but Microsoft has actually, I believe, 150 different Copilots. So they have Copilot for Excel, Copilot for you know everything. So just I think it's important um, that that we keep that uh, we keep that in mind. All right. So um, when we're listening to all this and we're talking about it, um, if the, man, the managers who are listening to this not only have to think about themselves, but they I think they should be thinking about their staffs. And what do you think? Um, um, folks can do to prepare themselves and their staff uh, to make sure they're ready for this this big change that's coming. Um, Jamie, do you want to start? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, and I, I'll pick up again what Lynn said earlier, and, and it's, a, it's a common theme, isn't it, that, um, yeah, we can use the analogy of putting our head in the sand and not learning, but actually go out and find out what's out there, go and look at what other organizations are doing, go and educate yourself. Mary, you've got hundreds of videos, and mm -hmm. I learn myself from all the videos you do and the podcasts you do and we, you should as whether you're managers or you're the staff of, of managers you should be educating yourself all the time
time. So go and learn, talk to others, and actually, you know, and believe it or not, go and talk to those 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 vendors and those partners that sell solutions. Yes, okay, you might appear on a list of theirs and they might try and sell you something, but actually look what the roadmaps, what they're trying to achieve with their solutions, listen and learn and consult with them and get the thought leadership part from them. But you've got to keep yourself up up to date with information. Right, right. And Lynn, I'm gonna now put you in the spotlight. Well sure, do, sure. Do you agree? Yeah, and, and as you are speaking to vendors, you know, to Jamie's point, encourage your staff to do the same because I you know your question Mary had to do with not only the managers but the staff too that maybe it's um, giving each of your staff people an assignment okay you talk to this vendor you talk to this vendor and then come back together to share what was learned but I think also before you even go out there to, to learn what's out there be very clear on what your internal um, challenges are so then you can really have a, maybe a clearer focus when you're talking to different vendors and exploring different things you're specifically trying to figure out what can help my organization and help us improve where today, you know, we're maybe struggling. Uh, you know, I think that that's very important. So it's just something to keep in mind, be clear on, on what you need, and then go out there to, to see what, what can help you. Okay. All righty. So as uh, uh, Lynn and Jamie know, I think this issue is so important that this week, AP Technology Week, we released a video every day on the different, a- different aspects of technology and AI and their impact on our our, our profession. This leads me to the question that listeners are probably quite interested in hearing to have the whole panel answer. And so that is what skills are important, um, things that we think about now. And and I'm going to start off with just a a brief commentary. Uh, We have another talk with a report from Microsoft, and I I believe the number was 71%. 71% of executives said that they would be more likely to hire a person who had some AI skills, but was less experienced in the particular job function uh, than somebody who was more experienced. And so this leads me to, and you know, with some of my own uh, foibles and some of my own times when I've tried this, is that we have to learn how to create these AI queries. And what I'm learning as as I go through this journey is you have to be very precise. So I was using Microsoft Copilot to try and get pictures for a talk that I was doing on AI. And so I said, uh, and I knew it could draw, so I was quite interested to check that out. So I said, give me some pictures uh, about whatever it was that I needed. And so it gave me a list of places where I could buy photos. I didn't want it to buy photos. I wanted it. So I, I quickly learned that I couldn't say, give me, I had to say, draw me a picture of a clock instead of give me a picture of a clock. And I think we're going to have to learn how to create these queries. It seems like, oh, we must know how to do that, but I don't think we do. And I, so I think that's one of the new skills. Um, you want to start, Lynn? Yeah, I was going to say, and test those things out before you start doing them in real life systems, <laughs> you know, try to figure it out. So obviously, Mary, you brought up the point of having some technology skills, or at mm-hmm. least um, being able to steer the technology the way you need it to be steered. But then also, and, and I think we've seen this for years already, but I'll bring it up again, that it, it's those human qualities or skills too. You know, if, if AP is getting pushed forward, then AP folks need to be able to have meaningful conversations with departments and other people in the organization, as well as vendors. And again, you know, if, if we're used to the old stereotypical AP person, which I think is is slowly um, leaving the profession to, to bigger and better things, uh, we know that, you know, they're just used to dealing with numbers and entering data. That can't be anymore. So if you've got a staff that isn't real comfortable or maybe real um, skilled at um, having having some, you know, meaningful conversations, that would be something you would have to invest in, uh, assuming they're willing to broaden their skill set. You know, that's another thing. It's taking that um, a little little further and, and looking at doing a skills assessment of your staff who is, you know, ready and willing to start taking on these new responsibilities and learn and, and you know, who isn't. Because when you talk about job shifting or even job losses, you know who is going to withstand all that. The people who have the right attitude, willing to learn and take on new skills. Right. And I I might add that in my humble opinion, anyway, the new skills are not difficult to learn. I've, I've been teaching myself. 
Right. To me, that's that, that's a dead giveaway that you all are going to be able to do it. So, Jamie, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm just going to follow on from both what, both your points. Um, I think the two things I would say, which are skills but more behaviours, is uh, be curious and inquisitive mm -hmm. because, you know, there are two areas where, um, yes, we all know that there's, there's areas of accounts payable, absolutely, where people just like doing what they've done forever and they hope that at some point they'll retire and they've done what they've ever done forever. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, with new technologies, new ways of working, we've got to change some of that. So being inquisitive and being curious are really important. But Lynn's absolutely right. The softer skills that come with those are really important. And, uh, you know, look, let's, let's, let's again address the elephant in the room, uh, Mary. Um, <laughs> age age is going to pose a factor here because people will think ultimately the new tech and ai is driven from youngsters absolutely mm -hmm. isn't it really isn't and like you said um i'm still trying to get to grips with it but it's all about everything you've got to put the time and effort into learn and understand just like when we have children it's no good to trying to explain to a child in the language of an adult you learn from the language you give to ai mm -hmm. so you've got to learn the language so it's not a foreign language it's something we've got to educate ourselves in so we can fully understand and also AI can fully understand what we're trying to get from the, the, the solution or the system. So it's a learning product, but we've got to be inquisitive, we've got to be curious, and we've got to work on those softer skills, but there is no age barrier. This applies to everybody who wants to go and learn and sort of develop their skills. Okay, very good. So I have um, it just uh, something that happened in my own family, and I'm trying to be generic so nobody can figure out who I'm talking to, but I was talking to another member of my family who was repeating what a third member had said and that third person uh, was saying oh AI won't impact my job and I was like wrong <laughs> you're too smart to think like that it's going to impact everybody's job so don't think oh what I do you know I write macros or whatever it, it will impact everybody's job but it's, it's not that difficult to learn or to learn how to use start training yourself little by little again I just want to reiterate that sometimes it's wrong so anything that you get any results that you get before you give them to your boss check them out speaking of new skills i did a short talk on what i think these new skills are which you can watch right now using the link that is in the description and has appeared on your youtube screen along with links to all our other ap technology week talks and links where you can learn more about lynn and jamie and their organization good luck